Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs and a Merry Christmas to all of you. Now this week I've been down to the town of Hythe and whilst there I found a charity shop that sold coins. So of course I went into the charity shop and had a look through the small tub of coins they had there and um, they did in fact have some good coins. There was mainly some not the best coins, a few random foreign ones, some euros, some of the usual stuff you might find for very cheap. But within there, there were some older coins, some silver coins, almost 200 years old coins and some Victorian silver as well. So without further ado, I will now show you the wonderful coins I bought down in the charity shop down in Hyde. So, as usual, I put the coins in this wooden box here, and I'll give you a sneak peek before we go through one by one, from worst to the best. Whoa, a very quick sneak peek there. So I'll move that off to the side now, and like I say, we'll go through worst to the best. Now the first coin is a little bit different to usual, as it is in fact not English. Now you may be thinking, Ethan, you only collect English coins. This is true, but I did buy this coin here. Now this is a two shillings or florin from 1941, and we can see it is from South Africa. So here we have the obverse, and it says Georgius VI Rex Imperator, meaning in English, George VI, King and Emperor, as he was Emperor of the Empire, consisting of at the time, part of which was South Africa. So therefore, the Royal Mint made coins for South Africa, featuring the King's portrait. And it's the same portrait as used on English coins, and British coins done by Humphrey Paget. You can see there with a zoom in the initials HP for the designer Humphrey Paget of this portrait of the king. So this is a 50% silver coin, a very similar design to a half crown for Britain at the time, with the date either side of a main shield, legend around and denomination to the bottom. We can see there's a sort of tree or a plant in this part here. I'm not sure very much on the detail. We have a what looks like a cart here, some animals up this one, and then an anchor and a figure in this part of the shield there. If you have any more information onto the design of this coin, it was done by George Kruger Gray, I can know that by the initials, but if you have any more information about the design, then please do comment down below. So, why did I buy this coin? As I won't be going into my collection, well like I say, I found it at the charity shop there, and the charity shop was selling it for only £3. Now, I have not done the research, but it's on screen there, this to me looks like, and I'm sure for the time, 50% silver. And if it is 50% silver, then three pounds for 5.65 grams of the pure silver, because it's 11.3 gram coin, is a good deal. So a very, very good deal for the silver content as, you know, sort of bullion investment. And I thought an old 1940s colony coin for three pounds, I may as well pick it up as a sort of investment thing. You know, it's not worth that much you know, on its own, but just, you know, for the good price of the silver, why not buy it, I thought, for the first purchase at the charity shop for only three pounds. Now then, moving on to the British coins or the English coins, that will go into my collection, we will start off with this coin here. Now, a little disclaimer, this coin is in fact from my local antique shop and not from the charity shop down there in Hythe, because I had to get one, I just popped in while I was there. I did buy a few other things as well, which I'll show you next week or next video. But um, here we go, a 1919 threepence, again, just a usual standard threepence from the time. Of course, therefore, featuring the portrait of King George V on the obverse, so, you know, nothing special about this coin, a high mintage, a common coin, not the brilliant condition, but it is a little bit of silver, and as keeping with my rule I've done for the last few months now, of buying at least one silver threepence each week to add into my trough of silver, so we'll do that in just one moment. The next coin up from the charity shop in Hive is this coin right here, and this is a 1936 sixpence, as we can see here, with a design by George Kruger Gray of the six acorns, six branches, and six oak leaves, of course all six, as it is a sixpence piece. This one from 1936, as I say, which is the last year of the reign of the, or featuring on coins, of King George V. As we can see here, his left-facing portrait again by Bertram McKennell. So a cool coin there. Now, you know, nothing special, you know, too special. I do have this date in better condition for my date run and for my main collection, but in the, in the charity shop, it was only selling for 75p. Again, a really great deal for the silver. The silver is probably worth more, um, as of recording, you know, than 75p, so even just for the silver melt value, a good a good deal, and there's a bit of collectability for an old 1936 pence, so for 75p, who would say no? So there's the next coin. Moving on now to some non-silver coinage, we have here this coin I found at this charity shop. Now it is very shined, as we can see here, and very worn as well, but it's not too bad, and you can see the date very clearly, which is 1879, which happened to be a new date for my date run. They only had one half penny, and it was a new date for my collection. So that's a bit of luck there. We have the usual design of Britannia with the trident and the lighthouse and the shield. 
in draped clothing and a helmet, although as I do say, it's quite worn and quite shined. We then have to the obverse, of course, Queen Victoria. This is her young head portrait done by Leonard Charles Wyon, featuring more of her bust than just cutting off at the neck, as the young head does on the gold and silver coins of the time. We have the legend around, Victoria DG, Brit Reg FD, so Victoria, by the grace of God, Queen of Britain, Defender of the Faith. So overall, a cool little coin, a nice pickup for only 25 pence. I think a good, good deal, a good price, and I couldn't say no, as it is a new date for my collection. So let's add it into the collection. Now I do have something to admit that I'm not proud of, and that is that my half penny collection still resides within one of these books, which of course are bad for the coins. They do turn them green and all rubbish after a few years, but it's nothing happened yet. And hopefully Father Christmas on the Christmas Express will be coming to bring me some trays for the half pennies, like I have trays for all other denominations. But for now, we'll put it in the book we can see here. And by the way, also very poor half penny date runs, the least dates filled in of all my date runs for the half pennies. So maybe not such a surprising fact that the 1879 is a new one, but let's add it in to the page now. So there we go, the card has been taken out and the 1879 half penny is now in my book, but for not much longer, hopefully, and then it'll be put into the tray. So there's that coin. Now I'm back to some silver. I have this I bought. This is a lovely coin, an exquisite example that sort of jumped out at me when I first saw the coins at the charity shop. So this is a 1938 Scottish shilling. So this is really shiny though. That's why I bought it, mainly because it, well, it was a good price. Oh, no spoilers, straight into it. It was two pounds. So again, a really, really competitive price there for the actual silver value. And these are usually about £2.50 just for the scrap value. That's a good deal. We have the design here of the Scottish lion holding the two, the sword and the scepter with the thistle and the Scottish flag in the shields beside him, as well as the date and the denomination to the bottom with the legend to the top. Again, designed by George Kruger Gray to the obverse. And you can just see that shine as we turn it. A really, you know, not much, no wear at all to this coin. The edge you can see very thick and, you know, not worn down or smoothed over at all. And then to the obverse we have here, King George VI, again, Humphrey Paget, the designer. So that's the same portrait as on this coin here, as we can see, but just much, much less worn and more shiny for this coin than that one. So there we go, a great purchase for only two pounds, all very cheap coins today, which is good, obviously, to get a good deal. There are three coins left. I will now return to some non-silver coinage. This one isn't bronze though, like the half penny. This is copper. It is pure copper as it's made, made before 1860 when the bronze alloy was introduced. This is an old farthing from the reign of King George IV. As we can see here, his laureate bust there, facing to the left on the obverse, Georgius IV de Gratia, George IV by the grace of God. And you can see it's a bit damaged, a bit dinged up and battered maybe, but you know, overall, and a bit worn of course, but overall you can still see the portrait very well. His ear, eye, nose, mouth, hair, and even the laureate can all still be seen, and his clothing, all still be seen, so there's quite a good amount of detail still on this coin. The edge is obviously smooth, and we have to the reverse here, as I showed you before, Britannia here with a shield, the trident, a helmet and draped clothing, so similar to the halfpenny, and legend around. The date is the most sort of hard part to find out, but we can, well it's going to be 18 anyway, but I think we can see 1825, please comment down below if you agree or disagree, but I definitely believe this is 1825, so a cool 1825 farthing, from the charity shop for only one pound. So a good deal and a coin I did not have. So a new coin for the collection for only one pound. Two coins left now and again returning to silver, bit of bullion here. This is another florin for only three pounds once again. So similar to the this one from South Africa, this is of course the British variety with the rose crown and the two accompanying flowers there to the side. Design again by George Kruger Gray. And again, 11.3 grams of 50% silver for only three pounds. A bit more worn, perhaps a bit more battered, a bit more dirty than the South African version. But you know, again, with the far, this coin, sorry, the threepence and the sixpence, these three will all be going into my silver trough as a little investment there just for the silver to build up over time, bought at good prices, I'm sure you will agree. The final coin, my favorite of the day, found at the charity shop in Hythe, is this, hiding there in the little tub of coins that they had. Now this is a really nice coin, a bit worn perhaps, but it is very nice indeed. This is a sixpence from 1890. So an old sterling silver Victorian sixpence. Not a bad find at all. And for only one pound, who could say no? We have here the Jubilee portrait to the obverse by Sir Joseph Edgar Boehm. 
and that is of course looking very nice as usual, but it is a bit dirty, this coin. Perhaps not too worn, but a bit dirty, with a legend around there on that side. And then to the reverse, here we have the design by Jean-Baptiste Molen of the wording sixpence, and the date to the bottom there, but under the wreath, and there's a crown to the top, sorry. And then the date is 1890, and as the luck would have it, a new date for my collection, once again. So now we can add this coin to my date run of sixpences, so let's do that now. So here is the sixpence tray, as we can see there's, you know, there's a lot of gaps, but there are many coins in there um, with dates filled. And we have here 1890, of course, a gap no longer, a hole in the collection for no longer, as we can now remove the 1890 piece of paper and add in the real deal, an 1890 sixpence. So there we go, a very cool coin indeed, adding to my sixpence date run, one more date ticked off. So there we go, eight lovely coins added to my collection this week. We have the usual three prints from the antique shop, and then seven lovely finds from the charity shop. Most of them were rubbish there, I went, you know, they were just terrible random coins in a small little tub there, but there were some definitely diamonds in the rough with some silver, and even some Victorian sterling silver hidden there, and some 1820s coinage there hidden within the, antique within the charity shop down in Hive. So as always, please do comment down below your favourite coin I bought this week. For me, I think I'm going to have to give it to this coin here, actually. A lovely old 1825 farthing, you know, a cool coin, the oldest here, and my favourite of this week. So there we go. As I say, please do comment down below your favourite coin that I bought in Hythe. And of course, as I say, a Merry Christmas to all of you. Please do leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon for some more coins in the future from Bits and Bobs. Bye for now.